What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in today's video we're going to have a brief look at the upcoming Pirate Alliance Kizuna Clash, so it's going to be against Luchi, and of course we can pick up the Super Evolution Skulls to get Bonnie towards that 6 plus form, of course uh, Bonnie does change when she does Super Evolve between her two forms, we have made a video dedicated to this character when the data mine actually hit, and this unit is pretty strong, so make sure to get farming in the uh, in the Pirate Rumble season. You can get your copy of Bonnie. I think you actually get two copies of Bonnie, so you can like keep one and then super evolve another one because they do have slight changes between them, between the six star and the six star plus. But in this video, as I said, we're going to jump into each of the different fights in the Kazuna Clash. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about the Dex fight because they talk about uh, some things about the Dex fight in particular that will be a little bit different. So we'll come back to this uh, when we get to the Dex variation of this boss battle. But without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump into things with our first boss fight versus the Strength variation. So this is the team that I've currently built. And this team is in mind with a Shanks crew friend captain. Uh, you do have to make sure that Shanks crew starts as the Psy variation, uh, otherwise he doesn't actually get the cooldown, but that works very well for us anyway because we want to super swap him into his quick form. So, with the way that this team works, we are going to go ahead and jump over to the strength fight where, you know, characters that are slasher, driven, or cerebral receive cooldown. So that's what our whole team is kind of focused around. Battle number two. We're going to be inflicted with special bind on our crewmates only for five turns and two turns of special reverse. And then it also says that um, there's going to be a uh, an intimidate in regards to uh, any sort of chain multiplier shenanigans, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, so if you like try and use a chain boundary effect or a chain locking effect and try and carry into the next room, which is kind of important, uh, the enemy will kind of negate you from doing that. However, Shanks crew kind of alleviates that issue because anytime you activate a special to set chain multiplier, um, it extends the duration of it by one turn. So it actually offsets the enemies intimidation completely so that works really really well for us um, which means that you can get the chain lock you super switch with shanks use his special ability and then you're good to go uh, or, however there is two turns of special reverse which is why we have kinemon on the team so any character that is a slasher will get minus two turns of cooldown so luchi and crocodile on this team don't get the cooldown but by the time we kill stage two move on to stage three preemptive attack the characters will be ready to go so that shouldn't be a problem and then, of course, we move on to the final boss stage. So, on the final boss stage, I'm only really looking at the gimmicks past level 31. So, there's going to be 9 turns of bind on our right side of the team, which is why I opted to use Yamato as the captain, because Yamato does resist 10 turns of bind duration. You can see at the top of the little box there, um, it does say it reduces the bind duration by 10 turns, so we don't have to worry about that at all. There is also going to be... Uh, an orb change where all of your slots are changed into poison slots and the way that we're getting around this is with this crocodile uh, crocodile i chose this unit because he works under yamato uh, being a striker unit which works pretty well but also the crocodile once it eventually loads on screen for you guys uh, the crocodile does have a special that says that he uh, removes poison um, which is a really really important thing because that's the only way you can get around poison slots is if you use a special that specifically removes poison yeah your captain needs to be striker or driven to get it to work so yeah that works well with yamato because the unit is a uh, striker type character now there is also a tandem slot barrier where you need to hit the enemy with one tandem slot to break that barrier so after we use the special of crocodile to change the poison slots we would actually go ahead and use the super switch ability of yamato and the super switch of yamato is pretty good uh, as it will go ahead and state that it will uh, change her own slot into wano and changes adjacent slots into block slots in or uh, including block slots into tandem so that super switch ability is going to be important to generate the ability to um, uh, give the adjacent slots of tandem. So everyone has a matching slot. Yamato has a Wano slot. And then Luchi and the friend Captain Shanks has the tandem slot. And that's kind of important with the way that this team kind of works. That I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, there is despair inflicted. It's nine turns of despair, six turns after sockets, uh, four turns after the Kandro support. And then Zoro with his special will also resist uh, five turns of despair. So we can completely get rid of that. We also have the Odin and Roger support, which does give an attack boost to the crew. Um, it's kind of nice to have that for sure. Um, I, I guess if you don't have that, you will have to change that around to inflict uh, an attack boost for your team. Um, there are definitely ways you could do that, but this is just what I'm opting to do. You could change Zoro out for something else, but you do need to remove Despair, and this is the way that I'm opting to do it. Now, there is another thing that's very annoying about this fight, is that 
on level 31 and above, the chain attack down inflicted states that if your chain is 3.5 or less. So when you use Shanks Crew's uh, chain lock, it is 3.5 chain, so that's not going to be able to get around it. However, this is why I opted to use Luchi on the team. Luchi says that if you tap on this character with a quick or a tandem slot, it buffs your chain by 0.25. And this is important uh, because this includes chain locks. So basically, it, you know, Luchi has a tandem slot, you tap with him first, he breaks the barrier, buffs the chain lock that Shanks crew gives you, and the rest of the characters can actually do damage. So that's the whole goal of this team. Uh, making you get that, making sure you get that super swap, uh, and then you know you get those tandem slots adjacently, make sure to use Croc special first, and then you can go ahead and kill the, the strength boss. So it's not like the craziest team ever, it gets around the gimmicks for sure, um, but it's, it's not the cleanest team out there. But this is a really wonky fight, just due to the gimmicks that are occurring here. Um, because if you activate any chain lock on the final boss stage, they give you six turns of attack down and they remove your beneficial effects. So realistically, you could still use a chain locking effect and have another special or a captain that resists six turns of attack down. That is a pretty good way to get around this as well instead of using Shanks crew as the captain. But then you have to deal with special bind and stuff like that. So you have to give and take in different scenarios, but this is what I've opted to build for this fight. Alright, so now we move on to the Psy variation. So, for the next two teams that we have a look at, we're going to be using the brand new Legend Vegapunk as a friend captain. Main reason for it is, is because he's basically built to take on both of those two fights in particular. Yes, Vegapunk helps for sure in uh, in the previous fight, but he works extremely well in the Psy and the uh, Strength variation. So, speaking of the Psy variation, you want to build Free Spirit, Cerebral, and Powerhouse, but if you are opting to use... Uh, Vegapunk as your friend captain, you pretty much want to build a mono cerebral team and especially for this you'd probably want to build mono int cerebral and int cerebral work really well together, usually lots of good characters for that. So we move on to stage 2, there's going to be 8 turns of bind and there's going to be 3 turns of poison inflicted to the crew. So we can remove the poison with the Shiryu support, that's not an issue at all. And by using Vegapunk as our friend captain, he actually does remove bind and paralysis by 10 turns, so we don't have to worry about that debuff either. Now another character on this team that's important for this stage 2 fight is going to be Reiju. So this old school Rare Recruit Reiju is important because when we go ahead and use the special of Reiju, she says at the bottom that if we have a powerhouse captain, we get 70% damage reduction for 2 turns. And this is exactly why I've opted to use Marco as the captain here because he's not only cerebral but he's also powerhouse so by doing this we get the 70 percent damage reduction for two turns and we also get the support of uta which gives our cerebral characters a 1.5 orb and attack boost which is just giving us damage to break through that stage now the reason why we want the damage reduction for multiple turns is because as soon as we reach the final stage the enemy's preemptive attack will deal 150,000 damage to the crew so if you don't have a way to mitigate that damage, you could just enter the stage and die immediately. So that is important to have that damage reduction from the stage prior before you enter this stage. So it has to be at least two turns of damage reduction to mitigate the damage from the preemptive attack on stage three. Now, speaking of the other gimmicks, you do get a full board of bomb slots and Vegapunk as a captain makes those beneficial to the crew. So we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, and then the enemy on this stage also makes all type slots as well as Wano, Rainbow and Recovery slots get 90% reduction. So anytime you use a slot that is a colored slot, Wano, Rainbow, or Recovery, you're only dealing 10% of your normal damage. So you get huge, huge damage mitigation from that. So you want to try and ideally use slots that are not a type slot, Wano, Rainbow, or Recovery. You can use Tandem though. Tandem is allowed. So if you can build a team around that, that's not going to be an issue. As I said though, Vegapunk makes the bomb slots that we're given matching. So that's kind of really, really good for us. And uh, Vegapunk Special does change his own slot into tandem, so he's not going to be worried about that at all. Now, there is also another thing where you're given paralysis by five turns, Vegapunk resists that. You get Special Binded, either Marco Captain or the Vegapunk Captain will help you with that. The Special Bind is only for the crewmates, so as long as your Captain removes the Special Bind, or you have another Special that just removes it, it's not an issue. And you also get three turns of a 1.1 orb boost. So they really want you to use Atlas here because Atlas will like allow you to do double stacking orb boosts to actually get an orb boost. 
So that's what they really want you to do here. Now, the rest of the characters on this team, we've already talked about Marco and the Raju. Uh, we have Flampe with the Katakuri support. It basically just means we get the delay off on the enemy, and it's an in-cerebral character, which works out. So we're, we are allowed to inflict delay, which means when we use Vegapunk special, we can actually get the conditional boost if we want. So that works pretty well. And then Luchi is here because he gives us a chain boundary effect. Um, Jinbei is here as well just because it's just another int cerebral character, but Jinbei is completely replaceable. You don't need that at all. So that's a team that I've got with the Vegapunk friend captain. It, it, like, Vegapunk carries this team a lot versus Sai. Really not a problem with him as a friend, if you can find them, that is. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the final boss, which is the Dex variation. Now, this is where I wanted to go back to the notice that they mentioned right at the start here. If we go to the Kizuna notice... Um, right at the top, it does mention that for Battle 3 of Kazuna Clash versus Luchi, Dex, one of the following actions will be chosen as a random enemy action. So we really want to look at the 10-star difficulty. So it looks like past, well, it's, it's including 30+. plus. So it's on both variations before level 30, after level 30, that there is an intimidation that will occur. One of the following will be inflicted. So you'll either have an intimidate for attack and conditional boost. It might be for orb and base attack boost, or it will be an orb boost and a conditional boost. So you really have to pay attention as to which conditional or which intimidation is being inflicted so that when you activate Vegapunk special, you can select the correct buffs. Otherwise, if you pick the wrong one, the enemy will just remove your buff that you inflicted because all of Vegapunk's effects only last for one turn. So you have to be very cautious about which ones are being activated. Uh, heading back to the team that I was uh, showing off here, the uh, the Dex variation. So we're going to be using Vegapunk as a friend once again. Now, with this team, we're going to be using Core and Law as the captain. And despite the fact that this unit is not a strength unit, we'll still get cooldown because it's strength, Dex, and Int characters that all receive cooldown. But we have a full Cerebral team. Very important that we do that. And then when we uh, go ahead and reach stage 2, there's going to be 5 turns of attack down and 5 turns of damage threshold. This rare recruit Fukurakuju that I have in the middle is very, very good for this stage. Not only is he Cerebral, which works under Vegapunk, he's a strength unit. And this character special, it will go ahead and remove damage threshold by 5, reduces attack down by 5 turns, so single-handedly deals with all of that. And then the special also changes adjacent slots into Wano and gives a 1.1 chain boost. So he's a really good unit for generating matching slots, chain boost, and then we also have the support of Legend Raju, which says that when we use a special to change slots on a Cerebral unit, we get a 1.75 attack boost for Cerebral characters for one turn. So it just enables us to get a pretty solid amount of damage with one special launch, as well as getting around all of the gimmicks. So that works really, really well. Then we can move on to the final stage. So as we said, you know, there's different gimmicks that occur, different types of intimidation. You have to be very cautious about which one is being launched there. Uh, they also get given 10 turns of despair, which is why I've opted to use the Corazon and Law, because their captain ability will remove despair by 10 turns. So we don't have to worry about that at all. There is a pain debuff. So every time you launch a special, 25,000 damage is dealt. They remove your beneficial effects upon reaching this final stage. Kind of frustrating that they do that. They also inflict fear debuff, so all your crewmates abilities are turned off, and they also will go ahead and special bind your whole team for five turns. Uh, it is only for your crewmates though, that special bind, should I say? It's not the whole team, just the crewmates. So Vegapunk Friend Captain will enable you to get around that special bind. Um, so that's kind of how the team is going to work. Now, we do have the Bonnie. This, this Bonnie here, uh, it's, the way that it kind of works is that if you activate it on turn one, you get like a chain a chain uh, addition uh, for, for five turns. If you land three perfects, you get a chain boundary for three turns. And if you land four perfects in that next turn, you get the chain multiplicative buff. So it enables you to get chain boost, chain boundary, chain multiplicative if you launch it like on stage one, hit the perfects, it's very difficult to hit that amount of perfects. So ideally on stage two, you would use it and then carry the buff into the next room. Um, ideally, that's the way you would want it to go so that you get the chain boundary from Bonnie. Uh, and then that works really, really well. Uh, you could also go ahead and use the special ability of Cad Viper and Dogstorm if you wanted to do that instead to generate an orb boost on the final stage. But it really depends on what the enemy inflicts against you. We have Usopp and, and Nami here to grant a delayed conditional boost. Uh, and of course, the enemy does have um, the ability to be delayed, which is good. Uh, and then Fukuro Kuju because of his buffs. Corazon and Law, they grant an attack boost and they change all slots into empty. And they have the enhanced multiplier for their empty slots. 
So there's like pretty good ways to do damage, but it really just depends on what the enemy does. I did notice that I am using the Shark Superb ship, so we'll probably want to change that to a generic ship. You could use a Cerebral Focus ship, it doesn't really matter. Um, but as long as you're using, uh, Fuku Rikuju is really good, and then a Despair Reduction Captain is nice. If you're not using a Despair Reduction Captain, you want to try and, you know, use something that removes Despair, that's obviously going to be kind of important. Uh, and then trying to use as many Strength Units as you possibly can, uh, due to the fact that the enemy is a Dex Typing. But this is the team that I have right now, and I just think using Core and Law is pretty cool, because you don't get too many opportunities to actually use this character. So I think this is a really nice use case for a character such as this. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys in today's video, breaking down just the basic fights uh, versus the Kizuna Clash uh, against Rob Lucci. Remember, this is a normal Kizuna Clash. There is no super boss that you have to worry about. Next month, though, there will be a super boss Kizuna, so do keep that in mind. But hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Other than that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.